Today on Brilliant Fishing, we're going to talk about trolling artificial baits for striped bass, hybrid striped bass, white bass, what you need to get started, some different presentations you can use with artificial baits, whether that's swim baits, bucktails, uh, Alabama rigs, umbrella rigs, we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about depth control uh, using lead core line uh, and, and or downriggers. And so we're going to cover all of that today. Hopefully you'll find this content entertaining, engaging, inspiring, uh, helping you to get motivated to get out and maybe try something new on the water. Uh, we live in a beautiful state with lots of impoundments. Uh, we can get out and fish, um, whether that's the, the Lake Norman, whether we're talking Baden Lake, High Rock Lake, all these different reservoirs with uh, great populations, healthy populations of stripers, hybrids, uh, white bass. And so hopefully this content will help you to get out, get on those fish and get out and enjoy that time on the water, right? Enjoying God's creation that he's blessed us with here in North Carolina. So probably one of the first and biggest questions that people have when they're getting into trolling with lead core is depth control. How can I take this setup and how can I know consistently at what depth that this, this is reaching and, and so forth. So a couple things for you. Um, what I like to do is use 27 pound suffix lead core line and with suffix 27 pound lead core line, uh, the, it's very consistent and it, so it comes in different colors. When you get it off of the reel, it's going to have 10 uh, colors on the spool of line. Each of those colors is going to be about 10 meters or 30 feet roughly. Uh, and so for every section of color that you let out into the water, you're going to get between three to five feet. So just estimate, just say four feet of depth out of every color of line that you put in the water. Okay. Now it doesn't count if you've got half of the color in the water and then the other half of the color coming up out and into your reel. When the whole color of line, that whole 10 meters is in the water, it's going to sink about four feet. So just use that as a rule of thumb. So um, usually these, these uh, rolls come if you reel it up the way that it comes on the spool. Typically you're going to end up with white, uh, purple, uh, green and black. Okay, and so those are going to be the order of your colors. So if you have, um, let's just say a double swim bait rig on here like I've got uh, the double swim bait rig so I've got probably roughly an ounce of weight there uh, that's going to add probably another three to four feet so just for ease of estimation I've got my two swim baits they're they're sinking my line four feet I've got my colors of lead core so if I put all of my white color in it's an additional four feet so total of eight if I put another color in 12 another color 16 another color 20 and so i can keep keep track of just how many colors i put in the water um, and then again so most of your setups uh, again i'm using a high low rig here which i'll show you in a minute with with two swim baits and a three-way swivel it's gonna that's gonna add i just estimate four feet it may actually be a little less than that um, but that's just a good rough estimate on how you can do uh, with your lead core line All right, a little bit about the setups that I like to use for lead core trolling. So if you're going to use lead core, you need a pretty good size open face reel. It does not have to be a super expensive, uh, heavy duty like you need for, for hardcore saltwater fishing. Uh, if you're just doing inshore lead core trolling, you need a lot of reel space. Lead core line takes up a lot of room. Uh, you want something with a star drag system. Uh, you do not want to try to put lead core line on a spinning reel because of the change in angles. This, this stuff is, is uh, it's a little difficult to, to roll up. Uh, it's got lead, actually uh, lead wire inside a Dacron sheathing. And so uh, it, it does not like to bend very well, which makes knots a little difficult too. But you want a big open face reel. Um, I like the Okuma series. They're very reasonable. Um, anyway, uh, as far as rods go, you want something fairly long. Uh, this is just an older rod that I've got here. It is a uh, eight foot six. It's probably a little bit long. You could get by with eight or seven and a half. Um, but this is an Okuma Classic Pro, uh, very limber, long rod, which I like um, because you can uh, you can manhandle the fish. It's got enough backbone. Okay, 
but yet there's a lot of play in that rod. And so the one thing you do not want as you're reeling these fish in, you do not want slack in the line. Okay, you do not want a like a rigid rod where there's a constant like you know like line like jerking on the you know the hook set and, and loosening up that that hook in the fish's mouth because when that happens and white bass are really bad about it uh, striped bass okay they'll wear a little hook hole in their in their mouth as you're pulling them in and as soon as that line gets like some slack in it bam out it falls fish is gone so I like long limber rods that I can keep tension on the fish and uh, I'm not I'm not losing that that tension all right let's talk downriggers for a moment so here is the downrigger that I kind of like to use this is the uh, pen fathom master 600 um, this is an old style downrigger been around for years and it's super old super tested it is not complicated uh, what I like they're readily available they're not expensive the mounting plates not expensive um, but the downside to using downriggers is that you do have to have a mounting you, you have to drill a hole in your boat some of you I know are just like cringing at that thought but you have to drill a hole in your boat and you have to mount a mounting plate okay so they require mounting plates um, but anyway these pen fathom masters are really good low-tech uh, downriggers. Canon also makes a really good downrigger. Manual, uh, you don't need electric or anything like that. Uh, so what I like about this, you know, you go mount on your boat. Out here you put your ball weight uh, with your release clip and then you can set this downrigger um, just by releasing the spool and uh, letting out, you know, letting out your line and it has a little counter on the side so you can see exactly how many feet down that you're running your your release clip so what i like to do is uh get my rod put on my where my bait is it's going to be i'm going to use mono line uh, you don't need lead cord for this just mono line you let out 40 50 feet of line put it in your downrigger clip and then you're going to set this you're going to release this set it to the appropriate depth that you want it to set at uh, let's just say it's 15 or 20 feet okay add a little bit to that number because your bait is going to fall a little bit deeper than your lead weight so if you have this set at 20 just assume your bait's probably riding at 24 25 feet uh, if you're using something with a couple of ounces of weight to it uh, so set your depth lock this thing in rod in the rod holder reel it down so you got some tension on that rod that way when the fish pulls it out of the release clip that rod will spring up and hopefully take some of the slack out of that line so uh, other good thing about downriggers is that you can control your depth and uh, you can usually visibly see the the depth of your downrigger on your electronics so if you look at your electronics you'll see um, especially if they're very deep you'll be able to pick up that lead ball or or weight uh, on your your 2d sonar and so you'll you'll pick that up and you'll have a pretty good idea where your bait your baits are running relative to the depth of the fish that you're targeting and you so i'll show you some images here you can see in these images kind of where the two downriggers are running and you can see the spaghetti like um, stripers uh, or white bass that are uh, Sort of at that same depth so you can adjust your depth if you see that these fish are running a little deeper you can see your downrigger you know you know hey i'm five feet above them i can i can run down and just drop them down to where they're at so downrigger is another useful tool uh, you don't have to use downriggers you can accomplish the same goal with lead core uh, but what i like to do is use both in in combination so i got lead core lines out and downrigger lines out at the same time Okay, well let's talk about some easy rigs that you can tie so what i like to do is to come off of my lead core with maybe a short mono leader and run a, a double rig and so to make a double rig what you're going to start with is a three-way swivel okay and you're going to tie your three-way swivel to your main line you're going to come off of that with a short leader about a three foot leader then you can come off with about an eight foot leader uh, what i like to use is just some 20 pound mono line uh, i don't necessarily feel like fluorocarbon is really worth worth it and i really like the stretch of mono so anyway 20 pound mono line will work just fine all right so take a three-way swivel you know use whatever knot you like tie on your short leader your long leader 
And then, um, so I've pre-tied these up because I don't like fiddling with all this when I'm on the water. But what I like to do is to have a light and a heavy jig head. Attach the heavier jig head to your short leader, your lighter jig head to your long leader. And that way when your presentation runs through the water, you've got like your long leader going back to your light jig head. You've got your short leader underneath with your heavier jig head. And what's kind of cool about that, it's kind of like long line trolling for crappies if you use a double rig. You know, in my opinion, I feel like the first bait that comes by kind of gets the attention of the fish. And then it's like the second bait comes by, that's the one that they, that they grab. Now, oftentimes, and I'll show you some footage here. Oftentimes, you run one of these double rigs with a swim bait, and you will actually catch, you can catch two at a time. I've done that before multiple trips. Um, as far as uh, your double rig, you can either put bucktails here. You don't have to use swim baits. Um, I like to use swim baits. Um, I'm kind of a fan of the Striper Sniper uh, soft plastics. Um, there's all kinds out there. You can use whatever you like. Uh, but there's, you know, there's white. You got the chartreuse glitter. You've got the, uh, you know, the glow color. You've got, uh, you know, plain white, white with like pearl in them there's all sorts of different kinds so you just figure out what you like another thing that i like to do when i tie these on i don't know if you can see it in the video but uh, i like to use a loop knot and uh, just you know just your standard loop knot nothing fancy um, i like it and it might just be because it makes me feel better but i think it gives the the jigs a lot of action a lot more action a lot more play uh, you can use a whatever knot you like you can use a uni knot palomar knot fisherman's knot Whatever you like. I just happen to like the loop knot right here. So we've talked a little bit about rigs. You can do the double rig with swim baits or bucktails. Uh, another presentation I like to use is the Alabama rig. Now, Alabama rig is the smaller cousin of the umbrella rig, which you see lots of times your saltwater striper fishermen use. Umbrella rig is just a more robust version of this. Um, I like these. I've got links below to these on Amazon. These are relatively inexpensive, maybe four or five bucks a piece. Uh, they've got uh, they've got the you know the little head on there, five arms, uh, little spinners, and then you can uh, attach with a snap swivel the um, you know jig head of your choice, or you really don't even have to use a jig head. You could just use a bare hook, honestly. Um, I don't know why. I just kind of like having the jig head. It gives a little extra weight. Uh, but you basically put these on, you know, bend your wires out, uh, put on the swim bait of your choice. You could, if you wanted to, use some lighter bucktails. Uh, the only thing that you want to just make sure that you uh, figure in, factor in, is your depth. Okay, if you end up using a lot of extra weight, uh, it is going to sink your, your whole contraption lower. So just remember that. Um, so I like to go with, you know, pretty light, like three sixteenths or maybe even less, uh, on each of these jig heads. Cause you got a cumulative effect of it. It adds up to a lot of weight. So uh, a couple ounces, you know, you're going to get four feet of sink, uh, out of that. So if you go more than that, you get more sink rate. Um, just a word of caution when you're tying these on right here. Um, I have really been increasingly more of a fan of the uni knot right here. If you use fisherman's knot or uh, what's called a clinch knot or an improved clinch knot, a lot of times, because you're tying heavy mono to this typically, that knot will want to slip. And I'm not a fan of knots that slip, okay? In fact, I lost a fish the other day uh, in a tournament because I had used a different kind of knot right here and it pulled, okay? I thought it was, it was tightened down, it looked good. Uh, but it was not good. And so again, knots are important. You want to try to use a decent knot right here. Again, a, a uni knot would be a good choice uh, just to reduce that slipping. Maybe a Palomar, uh, you want a, a robust knot right here. All right, so let me, let me show you a little trick about lead core line and tying knots. So one of the things with this lead core line is really stiff, right? It's got a lead uh, core that runs through it hence the name. Uh, but what you want to do, when you want to tie a knot with this stuff, whether you want to join like mono to lead core or you know, put some backing behind it or whatever, um, you can use a swivel, um, but even if you use a swivel, what you want to do, you want to skin back the, the exterior of that and you see this, the lead that's inside. What you want to do is you want to cut that off, just get you out about three inches of that, cut that off, 
and then skin that back over top. Now you see what that did? Okay, so it's so now this sheathing out here, this Dacron, is a uh, is a lot easier to tie knots in now. Now, here's something that you can do to attach. If you want to attach a piece of mono to this, start with your mono line. I'll say it's like your leader line or whatever. Uh, get your end, and you want to tie two overhand knots in this. So one. Okay, so you got one overhand knot and you're gonna tie another overhand knot right on top of that one. So you're gonna put that, that thing smack right on top of it, just as close as you can right uh, on it. So you're kind of doubling it up, you're making it a little thick, okay? So kind of like that, if you can see that. All right, now you're gonna come back behind it and we're gonna take our lead core that we've took taken the lead out of and we're gonna make um, a knot that, Kind of to me, it looks like the shape of a like a W or an M. So what we're gonna do, kind of show you in slow motion. We're gonna come back over our mono. We're gonna make one wrap around. Okay, kind of like that. And then we're gonna we're gonna go over. And we're gonna go around it again, but we're gonna stick it back through. And we're gonna create a configuration that looks kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. We're going to pull that down, okay, we're going to keep it on the back side of our, our our square knot that we have here. Pull that down, we'll pull that together, and that's going to be a good knot to join your lead core to mono. Just trim your ends, you're good to go. Okay, one more quick thing that we'll talk about today, and this may be a good subject for a future video, would be when I get out there trolling, okay, we've talked about how to control the depth, we've talked about baits and where to where to put them, configurations and so forth. What am I looking for on my electronics? What do striped bass look like? How do I know when that's they're there? Okay, um, so I'm gonna give you some screenshots here. So here's a shot. This is a, what striped bass look like on your sonar. You can see the squiggly like spaghetti type lines. Uh, that's indicating a school of striped bass. Uh, sometimes you're going to run into other species of fish. You're not going to see that same characteristic spaghetti noodle type mass of fish. Uh, they're going to appear a little bit differently in the water column. Uh, you're going to see a more traditional arch shape uh, if it's other types of fish. Um, give you a screenshot here. Uh, this is a screenshot of a uh, school of white bass that's feeding on uh, a large school of shad and so you can see what those balls of bait look like um, I'll show you some footage here of actually catching those white bass uh, and actually uh, uh, I'll show you what those shad look like uh, that those fish were feeding on because <laughs> some of these white bass burp the shad up on the floor of my boat so here's what the shad look like uh, on the screen here's what they look like on the graph uh, there's the white bass on the screen, there's the white bass in the boat. So uh, just give you some footage, give you some idea of what you're looking at in the water when you're targeting these fish. not a striper and it's the biggest white bass I have ever seen the biggest one I've ever caught <laughs> that is a good one I think he's going home for dinner wasn't that big it was just in my other line <laughs> don't think I don't think he's gonna keep oh come on now boy we're going through a wad of them Still a good one. That's still a good one. That gum good white bass. Oh, there we got another one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you find this content entertaining, engaging, you'd like to know more. 
please let us know. Drop us a like, drop us a comment down below. Let us know what you liked about the video, what you'd like to see more of. Not only will that help us to produce things that you are more interested in watching, but also it's gonna help us improve our YouTube algorithm and our presence online. It's gonna put these videos in front of more people like yourself that want to learn more about fishing North Carolina's waters 